Hi, I'm B from Dex Mechanics, and in today's video, we're going to be making my very own 3D printed and transforming Seekers. So this is a video about patience and learning. See, for the past four years, I've wanted to create my own 3D printed Seekers. The Seekers are basically Transformers version of the Stormtroopers. There are a bunch of dudes that all share the same design as Starscream here and turn into jets, but they're in different colours and sometimes with minor design tweaks like the cone heads. So what I want to do is create a model that I can 3D print over and over again and make my own armada of Seekers. Now I'm going to want this print to be as much of a snap fit as I can get, no sanding, only minimal glue. I would love it if the pieces were colour separated, so you could just print it in the colour and assemble it. Definitely cartoon accurate. I also want them to be scaled to official figures, mainly the generation stuff, that's what I collect. And most importantly, it needs to transform. Now, before I even think about touching a CAD program, I'm going to sketch out my design ideas first. These are going to be rough, and I mean rough sketches, but it's still going to be a big help. Now, I can already kind of see the model in my head. The getting it on paper just helps me remember it later on. But sometimes if I can't see it so well, this helps me problem solve. Now I got a lot of questions on my Soundwave 3D prints on how I actually do the designing process. I tried my best to explain it, but there was still some confusion. Well, I collect Transformers. A lot of them. So I have plenty of reference. I try to figure out how the official figures work, and I've been mentally taking apart Transformers for a long time now. So I've had plenty of practice designing mushroom pegs, ball and socket joints, pin swivels. So when it comes to designing a transformer, it's more about knowing which of these joints is going to best suit the movement you're after. For instance, when I make action figures, the only joints I need are for the articulation. But transformers need those joints and extra ones to get vehicle parts where they need to go. It's something that unfortunately only comes easy with practice and testing. So once I feel like I've got a design that works on paper, it's time to begin the 3D modeling process. Now I'm going to be using a software called FreeCAD to get me started. It's a parametric sketch-based modeling software, and that's a nerdy mouthful, so let's break that down. So the sketch part means that each 3D object I model starts off as a 2D sketch. I can then stretch that into a 3D object. The parametric part means I'm editing parameters to make my shapes, and it saves each action I've done in a list, so I can go back and tweak it later on. So now it's time to actually model my seeker, and I'm going to start with the chest. While I'm not going to copy any engineering from pre-existing seekers, I am going to copy the size of the Earthrise Starscream figure that I've got. That Starscream is in scale with the rest of the figures I collect, so if my print is the same size as him, then they're going to fit right in with the rest of my figures. Now you might be wondering, why is he looking so basic looking? Don't worry, this isn't the final look. This is what we call a block model. This block model has all the joints and measurements that I would want in my final model, but none of the surface detail. If I spent ages detailing it only to find out that it's too loose or it's too tight, nothing fits, that's a waste of time. So I do block models first and only detail it once I've got the tolerances sorted. So I spent about three days converting my rough drawings into a 3D model and I made sure to copy the file that I was working in and move all the parts in that copy to test if it could transform how I want. If I can move the pieces in the computer software without anything colliding into each other, then hopefully the 3D print will do the same. So you know what that means? It's time for our first test print. And none of it worked. <laughs> this is fine, this is the whole point of testing it. The main thing I can do in this situation is figure out why it's not working how I want. For instance, my nose cone mechanism, where it was sliding inside itself, was way too thin and fragile for a 3D print. 
and the chest and crutch pieces just had nothing to properly grip onto and would fall apart. The knees were just ridiculously loose and couldn't hold up the weight, and the wings did not want to stay attached. So I'm going to take this list of issues that I've got and get to work fixing it all. Back in FreeCAD, things like the crotch was easy enough to fix, they just need some connector tabs. Things like the chest, however, needed so many tweaks that I ended up just building the whole thing again from scratch. This also made the proportions look closer to the cartoon, so that's an added bonus. The jet cockpit sliding mechanism I had was not going to work, no matter how much I made the walls thicker. So I scrapped it and made the nose cone fold up on the back. Now one thing to note about how I'm going about designing some of this is actually thinking about the fact that I'm going to be assembling it over and over again. If we take something like the legs, say, and compare it to Combiner Wars Alpha Bravo here, his legs slide up on this bar system that's much stronger than the slider I'm doing in my print. But do you notice the big difference between these two? Alpha Bravo's legs are made up of 10 parts, including the pins. Mine are made of 6, including the pins, and are much larger chunks. This makes the print stronger and a lot less tedious to assemble en masse if you want to army build. Does this mean the figure is weaker overall? A little bit. Sliders are not ideal, I'm fully aware. If I was making a figure I only intended to print off once, like a custom Megatron or Optimus, then yeah, I would do mechanisms more like Alpha Bravo. But I want to be assembling these Seekers en masse, so I need to make it easy to do en masse. So after all these tweaks, it was time for another test print. And it's definitely better, but it still needs some tweaks. This is mostly just boring stuff, like making tiny locking tabs here, some slightly thicker parts there, so let's move on to the fun part, the detailing. Now while FreeCAD is great for getting all the precise measurements I need for joints and stuff, it's really tricky to get organic or character sculpted detail, so we're going to be swapping over to Blender. Blender is definitely the Swiss army knife of 3D modeling. So it's also got an animation feature, and I can use this in my 3D print still. Because I can take all of my Seeker pieces and insert a keyframe while they're in jet mode. And then I can do the same for when they're in robot mode. And now they line up in both modes, so if I tweak one to detail it, I can check that it still fits in jet mode easily enough. When it comes to combining FreeCAD models with Blender models, there's two main things that I do. One is just straight up editing the imported SDL. If the part was already close to the final result, like the lower legs, I really don't have much to do other than add surface detail. However, for things like the jet nose cone and cockpit, yeah, I ain't got a lot more work to do. So I end up just sort of copy pasting the tabs and hinge holes from the block model and doing what's called a boolean action. You can think of this as either merging or cutting objects with one another. So I could cut the parts with each other so they line up at the edges, or I can merge the tabs from the FreeCAD parts onto the new Blender parts. For things like the head, all I actually need from the block model is just the ball joint socket. I can also use the cube head as a guide for how big I can make it, while making sure it still fits in jet mode, but that's really all I need from it. Speaking of the jet mode, I ended up using blueprints of actual F-15 Eagles, the model that Starscream turns into, so that I could get the silhouette right. The robot mode proportions are gonna take priority, so it does mean the jet is maybe a tiny bit more squished lengthways than it should be, but I definitely don't want this alt mode to be an afterthought. To avoid that, I'm gonna make sure that it all sort of flows together nicely. The rounded cockpit section blends well into the main body of the jet, the wings are flush with the length of the vehicle, the main thing is just to make sure it doesn't look like a robot scrunched up with a load of jet bits tacked on top. The last thing I want to do before I call it finished, though, is make the alternate heads. I want to do the cone heads, I want to do a female seeker head, so I could do slipstream and skywarp and everything, and I also want to do a vintage toy head, because I just think that would be brilliant. I can use my generic seeker head as sort of a starting point for most of these, except for the cone head. The cone head, I had to basically tweak the entire torso segment so that it would all actually work how I wanted. Yeah, I could cheat it and have a fake nose cone head, but this is me. When do I make my life easier for myself? So you know how I said at the start of the video that this project was a matter of patience mostly? Let me show you what I like to call my box of learning. 
I think most people would have given up at this point. I actually already gave up twice beforehand. I even made a thread on TFW 2005 and got a load of wonderful people commenting and interacting and giving me suggestions and tips. It was really cool, but this project's extremely daunting when you put it all out on paper. So all that said, I'm incredibly proud that I've actually finished this project. So proud, in fact, that I finally actually feel like I've made a model that's good enough that I want to share it to the public. That's right, you can purchase these files. There'll be a link down in the description below of where you need to go and what you need to do, but otherwise, let's enjoy the final results. Isn't this some of the coolest 3D printing I've done yet? I still really love my Soundwave, but these prints I can just take straight off the print bed and assemble. I don't need to spend hours sanding. I've leveled up a lot. If you like these seekers as much as I do and you want to print your own, like I said, there'll be a link down in the description that you can go and follow so you can purchase the files. And if you like what you saw and you want to see more, feel free to subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Farewell!